according to the prophetic vision that God gave John, I'm going to be just like him. So in spite of my state right now, in spite of my what I'm going through right now, I know in the end, I'm going to be just like him. I just want to leave you with a word, okay? Okay, so now we're going to go to 1 Corinthians. Now we're going to talk all over the 1 Corinthians 15, 5, 5, and 17. 1 Corinthians and the word of God, 5, and 17. Again, yeah, familiar passage scripture, but just walk with me and we're going to almost be done. 5 and 17. The word of God's, oh, oh, wait, 2 Corinthians. 517 says, one moment, one moment, and calm it down, sing for the worship. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. What happens, church? And then what happens? So everything about me is going to pass away. We are Every day as we're in our walk with Christ, and whether you got saved yesterday, whether you give your heart to Christ today, or whether you've been in this walk 50 years, every single day there should be a death of you and a resurrection of who God has said you're going to be. God, please help me today. There is an old man that must go. And because God has chosen you before the foundation of the world, that old man is going to go. He's going to go. And so there's a process that every single day God is taking us through because he's saying everything that you was is not according to my prophecy of who you're going to be. Everything you are, no matter what happened in your past, no matter what abuse, no matter what rejection that happened in your past, he said, that was all that sinful nature, but it's not going with me and with what I have promised you for your future, because in your future, you look just like me. Keep on working just a little bit, and I'm really going to try to be done, but I really am still high in the word. He says, so every day I have to take you through this process. I have to take you through this evolution. And while I understand it fundamentally, when I come into the reality, I started asking myself, how much of me? He said, I need all of you to die. Because Tammy can't go with me to because Tammy don't look like me. Tammy don't look like me. And so why am I trying to make it kind of simple but understanding the revelation of it? Is he said, because you let go what you want to let go. And then that's where the rest will come in because I need you to let go what I said got to go. So you let go what you want to let go. You let go things that aren't that hard for you to let go. You let go things that get on your nerve too. He said, but then there's another stripping of you because that all you cannot go with me in prophecy. Because that all you can't work miracles, but the new you could. Can that all you is not able to believe the impossible, but the new you can. So all your doubts, all of your insecurities, all of that unbelief. Because just because you ain't spoken no more, don't mean I'm not bound by unbelief. It doesn't mean I'm not bound by doubt. It doesn't mean I'm not bound by why well, I me. Mean, God, thank you for blessing me, but I think that's the end of my blessing. The devil is a liar. Eyes have not seen, ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. What? The things that God has planned for us. I need you to praise him right there. We're going to go to one more scripture. Watch the familiar scripture. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 32. And we're really going to almost be done. Father, help me today. And I do give honor to all who honors you. I greet all of our visitors. I greet you with the love of Jesus Christ. I give honor to my husband and his accent. And to all of our ministers and elders. We love you so much and appreciate you. Genesis 32. Here we go now. And, and, and Jacob, familiar story. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. This, saints, when you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit becomes that man, becomes that angel. And the Holy Spirit wrestles with you until you come into your new name. Until you come into your new identity. Until you come into that new man, that new purpose. And God has said in all of this, the Holy Spirit, when you receive him, the Holy Spirit is governed by what God had already ordained for you before this world began. The Holy Spirit, even when you make mistakes, even when you go outside the will of God, the Holy Spirit then has to chasten you and plead with you and supplicate with you until you are able to accept the new identity that God has placed on your life. The Bible said that Jacob was left alone. Please help me today, Holy Ghost. Every 
everybody, every believer will go through that walk with God alone. Every believer, you can have the best of husbands. You can have the most supportive of a prayer and intercessory team. You can have the, 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 the best of church membership. But everybody will go through a wilderness, a walk alone until you recognize, accept, and walk into the new identity that God has ordained on your life. Everybody. And this is where people sometimes lose it. This is where people, sometimes the demons will take advantage of it. Demons of discouragement, demons of rejection will take advantage of what God has ordained for a lonely season for you to know him. The devil will come in and say, ain't nobody thinking about you. Why ain't nobody calling you? And the devil will bring up your past rejection. Your mama didn't want you and the folk don't want you. I know I'm telling the truth. The devil will bring up all of these folk things when actually God is saying, no, you're in a wrestle with me and for the first time you will deal with you by yourself with me. You won't deal with you. You won't deal with you because your hallelujahs don't impress me. I know you. You're speaking in tongues does not camouflage who you really are. I know behind every tongue what's really hurting, what I really need to get to. And I'm going to wrestle with you until you're no longer Jacob. You are not the trickster. You are not the one that's full of schemes, but you are Israel and you are the promise that I place on your life. I need somebody to say, don't let me go. Tell somebody, Lord, don't let me go. And so the angel, the angel wrestled with Jacob. Some of you are in a wrestle for the next round that God is about to take you. Some of you are in a wrestle and that's why you feel confused. And that's why things that used to be okay are not Thank you. 
angel. The angel is transforming us. The angel is wrestling with us. Church God, please help me to lift it just a little bit higher. Because as I've said over and over and over, because we continue to dwell with Satan on his level. We continue to be parallel. The world is talking about, I'm the girl, I'm nervous. I don't know what's going to happen in this government. And you got Satan saying the exact same thing. Girl, I don't, I don't know who to vote for. This Donald, Donald Trump nor Hillary Clinton dictates my future. My future is dictated by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And whatever he says, what I do, this girl can do whatever they want to do. It's not going to affect what God has destined for my life. Because I know who I am. Y'all better praise him and talk back to me. And so the world, the church, keep getting moved and on edge over every little thing that Satan is putting forth. When reality is, if I buckle down and ask God, help me and condition me on this ride. And in the midst of chaos, God, give me the peace that you have promised me. So there was a wrestle with this angel. And, the, and, and Jacob said, well, I need you to let me go because day breaking. They said historically that he wrestled with this angel all night long. And in his mind, day break meant, I got to get up. I got to go to work. I got to do what I have to do. Are y'all working with me? All right, that's sometimes us. We don't mind travailing. We don't mind wailing. We don't mind lamenting before the Lord. But then it's like we want to come down to carnal things. Yes, We're too quick. Do you want to come out? They made back in the day. And some of y'all, if y'all remember this, back in the day, they used to say, child, they so spiritual power that you ain't no earthly good. Yes. I had two or three people say, what? Yes. They would say that to the church. You don't want to be so spiritual power that you ain't no earthly good. And then the new thing became, you need a balance. Y'all not going to let me talk to myself. The new thing became that you need a balance. And after all, you need that balance to saints to drinking wine coolers. I know y'all don't like me. That balance took the saints to having a boyfriend every now and then. I know y'all don't like me because the church started saying that we need a balance. And we don't need to be so holy. And God told me, he said, where in the world, in the world have I ever told you? I told you a carnal mind is enmity against me. I told you to let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. When you get up in the spirit with me, everything is wonderful. When you get up in the spirit with me, I'll show you have a good life. When you get up in the spirit with me, everything the devil is trying to do, I'll put you in a higher place and show you what I'm going to do. I need somebody to say, I don't mind being that spiritual. I need y'all to praise him. Clap those hands up and praise him. We lost our mind. Preachers, stop seeking God. I'm going real good right now. When we start saying the church need a balance, preachers, stop seeking God. And instead, what became a priority was business plans and administration and government. I know y'all don't like me. God moved right out of the church because we call ourselves needing balance. And we needed so much balance that we pray for five minutes and we'll talk about everything else for 25 minutes. God said, but my balance is get on my face until you get a breakthrough. Pray and do not faint. Help me to pray so right there. I gotta go somewhere and I'm almost done. So we tend to do the same thing. We'll be in these wrestles and then we want to break. We'll be in these wrestles and then we'll say, let me come on down. Now don't get it twisted. Who, who don't have to go to school? Who don't have to go to work? Who don't have, I'm not telling you to go blah, 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 sha, nah, nah. But I am telling you that you can go to school and drive your kids to school and say, Lord, I thank you for this day. Now God, cover my babies with the blood. In the name of Jesus, God, I find every ignorant demon, every unlearned demon, bless that in my children. And Father, release wisdom and knowledge and understanding of what make my children the spirit of even as you get upon Daniel, y'all better talk back to me. That's how you walk in the spirit of the devil and the liar. Father, you said that you would supply every one of my needs. When I go into this store today, Father, allow everything I need to match my budget. In Jesus' name, I know y'all not ready. I know y'all not ready to really acknowledge him in all of your ways. And let me direct your path. Cut those hands. Wrestle is necessary. go to the doctor and you get a doctor's report and you'll start looking up every single statistics. Hear me when I say this. Many of you already know our dear sister, uh, uh, Apostle Dennis' wife, Joyce. And y'all watched her and we know that the devil have hit her body with cancer. And so this cancer, it took our, daughter, our dear daughter from 150 some pounds or 30 something pounds down to 90 pounds. 90 something, 100 pounds. And they called me the other day and he said, Pastor, 
He said, I might need you to talk to Joyce. He said, she's scheduled to minister in Chicago. He said, first of all, that kind of plane ride is much, but we're going to take it. And then he called me and he said, Pastor, he said, she's scheduled to do two services. And she, he said, her body just can't stand. I said, son, I know exactly what you're saying. I said, a man of God, you're supposed to protect your wife like that, and you should be covering your wife like that. But I don't mean no harm. I think I understand where she is. If I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave here preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to sit down. with God. God has chosen nothing weak 
I need to get a whole bunch of amens. God, when he saved you, and when he started dealing with you, when you heard that call and answered it, he said, I ain't got nothing but power. My eyes haven't seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered to the heart of man the things that God had prepared for them that love him. Hands are all lifted all over this building, all over this building. There's a wrestle. And I ask the Lord, bless me. Bless me. Let there be proof that I've been in a wrestle with you. Bring my name change. Bring my nature change. Saint, you got to start rebuking spirits that come to your mind that are contrary to what God has said about you. Do y'all hear me? You don't receive no every negative demon that come to your mind. That's the pulling down of strongholds. You pull it down. Say you a liar. I shall be great. I shall be great. Say you are a liar. That is the old man. There's a new man that God is resurrecting. Hands are lifted. 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 We're going to do a corporate prayer today. Your hands are all lifted. We're going to do a corporate prayer today. And you're letting the Lord know I'm in the wrestle. But now I need you to bless me. Bless me. Let there be proof that you're changing me. Let there be proof that I'm giving a name change. Let there be proof. Come out of old ways of thinking. Come on out of them. Come on out of them. You're not a reject. Come on out of them. You are not going to be in poverty all of your life. Come on out of it. Come on out of it. I don't know what you did in your past. You're not always a whoremonger. Come on out of that whoremonger thinking. That's not you. That's not you. I need to get some sweet people speaking back to me. I'm not a fornicator. I'm not a fornicator. I walk in virtue. I'm not a drug addict. I'm not a drug dealer. But this temple belongs to God. Not presented as a living sacrifice. I need y'all to come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. I am not. I am not the negativity. I am not what society said I am. But I am great. I am great. I am great. And I accept it. I accept it. And my soul say yes to the new man. Oh, that's uncomfortable as I am. I'm telling you, yes. Hey! Because I so don't know what this means. I'm telling you, yes. I see somebody getting their breakthrough. Somebody is serious. Heads are bowed. Somebody is serious. I'm serious, Lord. I'm serious. I'm serious, I'm serious, I'm serious, I won't remain who I am. I won't remain for your hand is great on me. I'm serious. I'm serious about the change. I'm serious about the change. I'm serious. I'm serious about the change. This is not the purpose. That you have destined for me. Yet no mama say, I want the greater. I want the greater. I want the greater. I that you have promised me. I want it. I want it. I want it. Hands are lifted. Hands are lifted. Hands are lifted. Hands are lifted. I want the greater. I know you're not done with me. Oh, but we come a lot in all ways.
We ask that you order our steps according to your word. In the name of Jesus. So Father, we declare total victory over every soul that lifted their hands today. We declare total victory, Father, that when they leave this place, they will not leave from your presence. We declare total victory that Satan shall be up under their feet. We declare total victory, Father, that their minds shall be changed and transformed for thy glory. We declare total victory, Father, that every satanic habit shall be broken by the yoke of your anointing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare in the name of Jesus that every demonic tormenting demon shall be released of the heart and the mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare, God, that all causes of guilt and shame shall be wiped away. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare total victory, Father, that they shall walk as a new man. That you will open up new revelation. That you will allow them to see a new life. Father, I thank you for you will continue to breathe upon them a heart of forgiveness. You will continue to breathe on them a heart of repentance. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we declare total victory. That they shall be free. And whom you have set free is free indeed. Now I thank you, Lord. We thank you for every soul. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for our brother and our sister. We thank you, Lord, that they shall walk in the newness of life. We thank you, Lord. Are going. 
that by the time you get there, the blessing is already there. Hallelujah. The blessing is already there because I've shown my way there. There might be gifts that are here today that you are already in ministry. God has already given you some gift and form of ministry. You want to sow into good ground so that God can bless your gift. The Bible said when you're faithful to another man's ministry, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, but when you're faithful to another man's ministry, he said, then in your time, I'm going to bless you. So you want to sow into good ground. Those of you that might have new ministries, you're starting a new ministry. Let me tell you what worked for Pastor Bennett. From, from the beginning of the Lord teaching me about giving, which was about 15 years ago, he taught me you have to sow in ground greater than yours. You have to sow in grounds greater than yours. Why? Because that harvest is already flourishing. Does that make sense? That's just common sense. If I if I want if I if I'm trying to get me my own apple orchard, I'm gonna sow it to somebody that's already got a flourishing apple orchard. I ain't gonna sow it to somebody that's got oranges. That's not what I'm trying to do. So from the onset, I have always sought into other ministries that I believed in, that I saw the hand of God in their lives, and that were good ministries. And I say by the grace of God and by the mercy of God, God has always sustained this house. Yeah. Hallelujah. He has always. And I say that in the utmost humility, because it's been no goodness of our own, but it's been because of him. So we're raising tithers, and we're raising kingdom builders and kingdom sowers. The Bible says, and I'm paraphrasing again, the Bible says, charge them that have wealth. The Bible said, charge them to give into the house of God. He says, so that they'll understand why I bless them and so that their blessings will remain. So there is a responsibility on those that God has blessed and he blesses us financially so that there's meat in God's house. We just received yet another grant with the food and clothes closet, hallelujah. 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 I don't know what it is yet. We got to go next week. But, but, but it's because, saints, this is Pentecost, have become one of the number one food outlets in this whole South South area. Hallelujah. Okay, it's because of your giving. I need y'all to get happy about it. It's because of your giving. So we have been now pushing seven years or more of doing our winter sanctuary, and when it was five years doing winter sanctuary, but seven years or more with our food and clothes closet. The Bible said, what you do in secret, I'll reward you openly. I don't talk about it to boast and say, this is what we're doing. I talk about it so the tithers and the givers will know we got meat in the house and the church is doing what God intended it for it to do. And I appreciate you. So I'm asking all of the men of God to come first. This is how we roll to all of our visitors. We ask all the men of God to come first because we believe the blessing starts from the head down. So we ask all the men of God, we speak over our men of God from ages 12 and up that they will be prosperous, that they'll never lack. It was just, Catalina was just an amazing experience to watch our young men and our young daughters come together. When I was looking at the uh, slides, I said, you know, we didn't have a lot of the pictures of the worship. And I, and I thought about it, it was because all of us were worshiping. <laughs> I said, nobody, nobody felt like taking no pictures. We were all weeping and crying and worshiping. Uh, uh, okay, so just bear with me. So, okay, first of all, your pastor is now on Instagram. <laughs> so what happened was, was I was very proud for years that our statistics was that our following was primarily between the ages of 18 and 34. Well, Pastor Bennett don't do the social media stuff, but then since Tracy, I asked since Tracy, you know, come back and teach me how to do some of this stuff. So I went on Facebook not too long ago, and then and our statistics were saying it was like our greatest following was like 30 to 45. And I said, where all these old people come from? Where my kids from? Oh. <laughs> oh, that's just how we just talk. So then my daughter, Jasmine, her words came back to me when she said, Mom, she said, where you going to go? Facebook, that's, she said, that's, that's old now. She said, no, we do Instagram and Snapchat. I said, well, I'm coming where you are. That's a bit worn out on Instagram. But I need that whole congregation too. So, so, some of you may have seen the one where we had the capture of the, of the other ladies because at Catalina Island, not only were we there, and this, this is going to bless you, not only were we there, but it was a whole other group. And these were young women that were recovering from alcohol anonymous. Wow, beautiful, right. beautiful. And so we were having our worship and they just began to come in. And Brother Darian said, Pastor, we need to open the door and let them know they're welcome. Amen. And we opened the door and they just came in and began to worship with us and cry. So, so if you didn't see the Instagram, I'll say I can't believe you 
close to that. I said, well, so anyway, all right, I'm going to tell you, just don't do it. Okay, just read, go to my Instagram, and you'll see what her comment was. But she really was happy. She was so happy and said we were so amazing and so anointed. But you got to read Instagram to know what she really said. And I put it out because it was real. My point is, we are light everywhere we go. And it was great. Um, I need our prayer our wives to come and join your husbands, all of our wives, to all of our social media. Listen, let me tell you something. Give it up for our tip ambassadors and for our E-Watch Care Church. membership is growing. It's growing. And I'm so proud of our tip ambassadors for reaching out. And we got people that are sincerely saying thank you. Thank you for reaching out to us. Thank you for letting us feel a part. For those of us that are watching us via Periscope, if you don't have a church home, if you have no covering, that's where the Lord wants us to do e-watch here. We're just watching over you so you have something to be fed from on a weekly basis. So you have something to keep your spirit alive on a weekly basis until God assigns you a pastor. All of our wives are coming with their husbands. All of our wives are coming with joining our husbands. To all of our social media saints, YouTube, thank you for your sewing. Thank you for your uh, our wives are here. Okay, all of our daughters Zion, look like they're here. All of our daughters of Zion are coming. These are all of our beautiful, beautiful, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. Young women of God, that God is keeping them chaste and virtue. I thank God that our women of God do not need sugar daddies or sugar mamas. God is supplying their needs. They are doing well. They are prosperous. They don't have to compromise themselves. They can stay in their virtue and honor. We speak it every single week. Hallelujah. We're coming with our $25 seat above. Offering for food. Our tithes are offering for coming. Woo! September, saying September. September Bible study will be relentless prayers. Hallelujah. Relentless prayers. Everybody want to be a part of that. Everybody want to come to that. We are getting serious about prayer. I want the prayer that's going to make these door posts shake. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So I'm working on something, but just bear with me a little bit. About sign. So, uh, and my husband's men came. Uh, we made a shelf and put all these candy jars on it. And so, in his van came, he cranked up that sign. So we was watching some shoot 'em up movie. And he was shoot 'em up, shoot 'em up. And at the very second, one of the shots came like, brrr, it was like, boom. And one of the candy jars broke at the exact same time. And we was like, wow. So we turned the lights on, jelly beans were everywhere. And we said, how did that happen? But it was the vibration of the speaker on the wall that caused the jar to shake and fall. The Lord said, he said, in the day of Pentecost, didn't I say there was a sound? Yes. Y'all better help me. He said, there's a sound that will shake the door post. Y'all better pray in that life. Y'all better pray in that That's where we're going. I'm praying a prayer. We're going to get into prayer to the door post going to shake. In Jesus' name, because the sound will penetrate. Lift your offering to the Lord. Everyone's lifting their offering. You're lifting your offering. Now, we have no shame in our giving. We have no shame. Whether you're giving a thousand dollars or whether you're giving a dollar, you are giving God your best gift. You are not giving it to me. You are giving it unto the Lord. And there is no shame. Do not take your dollar and ball it up. Stretch that dollar out because God will make that dollar a hundred. And he'll make that hundred a thousand. And he'll make that thousand, ten thousand. Never have a shame. God blesses. What kind of giver? A cheerful giver. God blesses the cheerful giver. I can have a million dollars and give it with regret and won't get the same lesson as a person to give a hundred dollars with joy. Yes, yes. So whatever you do, you're doing it cheerfully. Your hand is lifted because you're thanking God that he has supplied your need. You're thanking God that you have the activity of your limbs. Now, Lord, I praise you for every giver, every tither, every sword. I thank you, Lord, for the kingdom builders that you are raising up in this church. I thank you, Lord, that you are a God that have continued to stand by your word. You have continued to supply every one of our needs. Father, I thank you for the love of the wicked that is being transferred over to the just. Father, I thank you for the millionaires and those that will have plenty to be able to meet the need of the house. And Father, the oil shall remain in their 
your house. I thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, as we sow this seed now, Lord, allow to come back into our bosoms, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold, allow welcome in to give unto our bosoms and all the precious people of God say, Amen.